Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 9 in the Broken Access Control module titled User ID Controlled by Request Parameter with Data Leakage in Redirect. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portsrigornet slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Go down. Select the learning path. Go down. Select access control. And then go down one last time. until you reach lab number nine titled user ID controlled by request parameter with data leakage in redirect. All right, let's get started. This lab contains an access control vulnerability where sensitive information is leaked in the body of a redirect response. To solve the lab, obtain the API key for the user Carlos and submit the solution. You can log into your own account using the following credentials and here are the credentials that we were given. All right, so the target goal over here is to obtain the API key for the user Carlos and then submit it. And the way we're gonna do that is by exploiting a broken access control vulnerability where when you try to access someone else's account, although it, let's say it redirects you to the login page, the body of the redirect actually contains information about the user or actually loads the page before redirecting you to the login page. This is a pretty interesting vulnerability because I've seen it in real world applications. And and it essentially gives you access to the entire account. You just have to configure your uh, proxy to uh, convert 302 redirects to 200 OKs. And this way you gain access to all the information of the user. And this will make more sense when we actually do the lab. So let's access the lab. And notice over here that I'm using the built-in proxy of burp. And so all my requests are already going through HTTP history. All right, the page loaded. The first thing that we're going to do is log in with the account that we were given. Just to understand how the application works. It's the same application we've been dealing with in the past. So you've got the username right over here and the API key. Now, when I click on my account, Notice over here that it uh, takes in the ID of the user, so the username of the user, and then it displays the account. Now, I wonder if this is something that is user controllable, so controllable on the client side. Now, if we do this on the browser, so if we go right over here and we put in Carlos, because that's the account that we want to compromise, we hit enter and it redirects me to the login page. Something that you should always check for is if the redirect leaks any information. So if we go back uh, to our request right over here, notice over here it says 302 redirect and it redirects to the login page. However, it actually outputs the page in the 302 redirect. So if we go down over here and search for Carlos, you could see the page for the Carlos user and the API key for the Carlos user. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that when we did it in the browser, because a 302 redirect is something that is not visible, it automatically redirects you to the page, you won't be able to see that there's actually a vulnerability. You do have to proxy the traffic in order to see if it's vulnerable. And we could see over here it is vulnerable, so we're going to copy the API key of the Carlos user. 
submit it as a solution, hit OK, and here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. So we successfully completed the exercise by manually exploiting the vulnerability. Now let's script it in Python. The first thing that we're going to do is import all the necessary libraries. So we're going to start off with requests, access, and URL lib3. We'll also import the beautiful soup library, so bs4 from beautiful soup and the RE library, just in case we need to use regex. This looks good. Next, we're going to disable TLS warnings. So disable warnings, URL lib3.exceptions.insecure request warning. And then we're going to set our proxy setting because we want all of our requests to go through burp just in case we need to debug them. So HTTP 127.0.0.1.8080. Same goes for HTTPS. It gets sent to burp, which is running on HTTP 127.0.0.1.8080. Okay, this looks good. Next, we're going to create our main method. So if name is equal to main, then call the main method. And we'll define the main method right over here. So def main. And we're going to say if the length of the command line arguments is not equal to 2, then print the usage instructions and print example instructions. So we'll start off with the usage instructions. So we'll say usage is the name of the program and the URL. And we'll take the name of the program from the command line. So sys.argv0. Same goes with the example instructions. So we'll say example, again, the name of the program, and let's say an example URL is www.example.com. And we take the name of the program from the command line arguments as well. And then we exit the program because the user ran it incorrectly. All right, so if the user runs the program incorrectly, we output these instructions over here and then we exit the program. Now let's assume that the user did run the program correctly. So the first thing that we're gonna do is start a sessions object, so request.session. This way, if I log into an account, which I will need to log into the account that we were given, what happens is that it'll maintain the session across all my requests so that I don't have to log in every time. So we're gonna say URL is equal to the second command line argument, because an array starts with zero. And then we're going to call a function called Carlos API key, which takes in the session object and the URL. Let's save this. Now we got to implement that function. So def Carlos API key, again, takes in the session object and the URL. And we'll implement the way to exploit the vulnerability right over here. But before we do that, the first thing that we need to do is understand how this works. So if we go back to our request and we click on uh, the login request, so when we were trying to log in as the user that we were given, notice over here it takes in three parameters, the username, the password, and a CSRF token. Now this CSRF token is taken from the page that was loaded before this one, which is the login page. So if you look over here, it's taken from the response of the login page. And what we're going to need to do is extract this value over here in order to be able to log in as the Carlos user. So the first thing that we're going to do is get the CSRF token from the login page. And the way to do that, we're going to set a variable called login URL. 
It takes in the regular URL that you gave uh, the program in the command line and then uh, the path to the login page, which is right over here. Next, we're going to create a variable called CSRF token and uh, set it to a function called get CSRF token, which takes, which takes in the session object and the login URL. And this is not a built-in function in uh, Python. We'll have to implement it ourselves. Now, once we have that, we'll continue the code right over here. So let's implement this function. So let's say def get CSRF token. Again, it takes in the session object and a URL. And the way we're going to obtain the CSRF token is again through loading the page first and then extracting it from the response of the page. So we're going to say r is equal to s.get. So we're performing a get request. It takes in the URL. We're going to set verify to be equal to false because we don't want to verify TLS certificates and proxies to be equal to proxies because we want the request to go through burp just so that we could analyze um, the different requests that our script sends. Um, and in case there's an error, this way we could debug it. Next, we're going to say soup is equal to beautiful soup. It takes in the response of this request right over here. And we're going to set the parser to be html.parser. And then we're going to extract the CSRF token and save it in a variable called CSRF. And the way to do that is we're going to use the find function in beautiful soup. And we're looking for an input element that has the name CSRF. And the value that we want to extract is in the value attribute. So the way to look for that using the find function is set it to the input element and then say the name of this input element is CSRF and what we really want is the value. So we're going to put that right over here and say value and again the value is this right over here. So we want the string that is saved in the value attribute which is this one right over here. Okay, let's save that. This should output the CSRF token. So we're going to return that right over here. And what will happen is because we're calling it right over here, it'll return the CSRF value and then it'll save it in the CSRF token variable. This looks good. Now we have everything that we need in order to log in as the user that we were given. So log in as the user. Let's print a statement. Logging in as the user that we were given. Now, if we go back right over here to the login request, it takes in uh, certain data in the form. So it takes in a CSRF token, it takes in a username and a password. The username we know, the password we know, and the CSRF token we just extracted. So we have everything that we need. So let's set that in a variable called data login. And then again, we're going to say the username is the username that we were given. The password is the password that we were given. And the CSRF token is the CSRF token that is saved in the variable CSRF token. So this one right over here. All right. Now all that's left to do is make the request. So we're going to say r is equal to s.post. It's a post method because if we go back to burp, you could see over here, it's a post request. And it is to this path right over here. So we're going to say the uh, URL is login URL. The data in the request is data login. So the one that we just set, we're going to set verify to be equal to false because we don't want to verify TLS certificates and proxies to be equal to proxies. Because again, we want our request to go through burp just in case we need to debug it. And then we're going to set the response of the request in a variable called res. 
Now I want to make sure that I properly logged in as this user. And so what I'm going to check for is the string logout because you only see the logout string when you're uh, logging in and you'll see it right over here. So I'm going to say if logout is in the response, then print successfully logged in as the user that we were given. Let's put that over here. And if it's not in the response, that means I wasn't able to log in as the user. So could not log in as the user. And then we're going to exit the program because if we can't even log in as the user, we can't exploit the vulnerability because it's an authenticated vulnerability. All right, so we were able to log into the account. Now the next step is to access the Carlos account. And the way we're going to do that is by attempting to exploit the access control vulnerability. So we're going to print another statement saying that we're attempting to exploit the access control vulnerability. And to do that, if we go back to burp and see how we attempted to do that, it was through a get request. And all we did is give it this path over here. So the ID was Carlos. And if it gives you a 302 found, um, what you need to do is extract the API key. So if we look up API right over here, we need to extract the API key from the response of the request. And that's essentially what we're going to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is perform this request right over here. So we're going to say Carlos account URL is equal to the path of Carlos's account. Let's paste it in here. And then it's just performing the request. So s dot get get because that was a get method and then we're going to say the url so we forgot url plus this so the url is carlos account url and we're going to say verify is equal to false and proxies is equal to proxies now a new flag that we're going to add that we usually don't add is the allow redirects flag and we're going to set that to false. So um, in the request library, when it sees a 302, it automatically follows the 302 redirect uh, to the page that you're redirecting to. And that could be an issue because this way we're going to get the response of the redirected page, which is a 200 OK page, the login page. However, we want the response of the 302 page. And so what we're doing with this flag over here is saying, do not allow redirects. And this will allow us to extract the response of the 302 page. OK, so the next thing is set the response to a variable called res. And then we're going to check if Carlos is in the response. And the reason we do that is because if you can't find Carlos in the response right over here, that means you weren't able to properly exploit the vulnerability. So if Carlos is in the response, then print retrieving API key. And then we'll retrieve the API key. But before we do that, let's put the else statement. So if Carlos is not in the response, then we need to print could not exploit access control vulnerability and exit the program. OK, now let's go back to the case where Carlos is in the response. So now we're going to extract the API key. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say API key is equal to RE. So we're going to use regex for this. And we're going to say find all strings that are that satisfy this uh, regex requirement. So the regex condition that we're going to put is this right over here. So we're going to look for this string. 
and then we're going to say any characters after the string and then end with this string right over here so the div element let's copy that and we probably need to escape this one as well and we're searching through the variable called res which is the response of the request all right so what this regex string essentially says is it goes like give me all the characters that are between this string over here so your api key is and this string over here so the div element so if we go back right over here the characters that are between those two uh, strings is this one over here and that's what's going to be outputted since we are using the find all method what we're going to do is say print api key is and then just take the first instance that it found so we're going to say api key zero because this does output a list so we're just taking the first element in the list okay this looks good let's save it it saved correctly so now we're going to run the program so go to terminal new terminal and then say python3 access control lab 09.py and then the url of the application it likely timed out so we'll have to reopen it copy the url put it in here remove the trailing slash because that'll interfere with our code hit enter and we get an error so if we go to line number four It's actually from VS4 import beautiful soup. Let's clear this and run it again. And here we go. So it says it's logging in as the user that we were given and then it exploits the vulnerability and it retrieves the API key. So if we copy this, Click on Submit Solution, put it in here, click OK, and reload the application. We should see the message that we've successfully completed the exercise. All right, so we've successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually and then scripting it in Python. In the next couple of labs, we'll look at more complex cases of broken access control vulnerabilities. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.